Okay, start again. Welcome back, Nine World Chronicles. Welcome back, fam. So I wanted to get into this mythology about Yakub, and I had not voiced anything in a while because I've been working more towards some animation, but this one I was just compelled to get out. This is a story of Yakub, which is a fascinating story that comes from some ancient mythologies. So the subject of Yakub, and if you're not familiar with Yakub, this is a, 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 a big figure in certain mythologies around the world. And Yakub is is often equated to the biblical character of Joseph as well. So that becomes significant. He is associated with the city of Mecca, um, which is where he was born. And in this time period was approximately 4,000 BCE. So we're saying approximately 6,000 or so years ago. And Yaqub was a scientist himself, and he was associated with the tribe of Shabazz. His base of operations later would be the island of Patmos, so we see many biblical representations already in the story. But this is partially a story about history, but also a story about genetics, which is ultimately what this will come to. Um, so Yakub was born in the ancient to the ancient tribe of Shabazz, and this was an early human civilization that developed uh, in the area of the Fertile Crescent. They developed a relatively advanced culture with diverse commerce, medicines, advanced uh, education. And Yakub himself was of a genius level intelligence. And this was evident in his early childhood. He also showed negative mutation, uh, macrocephaly, which puts, uh, is a condition that puts extra fluid on the brain, uh, pressure on the skull, and uh, causes the head to grow to an abnormal size. And this is one of the biggest things about Yakub. He's often called Yakub, the big-headed scientist, um, which was a derogatory name for him. Now, being a mutate or showing uh, uh, an inferior gene in an otherwise genetically strong environment, he was viewed as an outcast and he was subject to ridicule. He was seen as a physical manifestation for his in inferior genes manifested in this abnormal cranium. Now, because of this, Yakub, who was an intelligent child, developed a passion for the study of mutated genes, and this would be the foundation for the work from, of his life. Yakub, because of his, his condition, grew up in relative isolation, and early in life, uh, he began an interest in the laws of attraction and repulsion, and this would influence his later theories on the idea of ma manipulation that would later be known as trichnology. Yaku became a very hateful person towards his own tribe and deemed them as people who had treated him poorly and perhaps uh, deservedly so and he began to use his theories on manipulation to develop a cult following. Now the basis of Yaku's theory was that in any civilization, in any society, approximately 33% of the population was discontent. So that was the strength, that was the number that was key to him, that 33%. And that will be a key number as we devolve the story. He felt that with subtle manipulation of the laws of attraction and repulsion, he could help tear down the civilization that had shunned him. So he taught his, his followers the principle of, of technology, a method of manipulation that involved attraction and repulsion in human behavior. They used lies and, mi and misinformation. And at that time, what was their media, right? All cultures have had media of their own sorts, though... And he was very successful to the point that the reigning king had to have all of his followers arrested and charged ultimately with, with treason and sedition. And he was, the problem again is that the king was not prepared to kill so many of, of his people. Again, this was a 33% of his populace. So he offered Yakub the choice of exile to a distant island. And Yakub, being savvy and knowing that this probably would have been one of the, the king's options, accepted on the condition that he would be granted 10 years of supplies to start a new community. Yakub and the 33% settled on the island of Patmos. And despite living in these uh, paradise like surroundings and having uh, bountiful harvests in which they thrive, Yakub was still only focused on three things the study of gene mutation the laws of attraction and repulsion, and the hatred for his original tribe, which would drive him. And it was fate that ultimately brought these three things together. So his research in the fields of law and attraction told him that he could create an opposite 
a counter to the hated people of Shabazz, which would have been his tribe that he felt so ostracized from. And so he went about the process of finding a direct polar opposite to the tribe from which he came. And ultimately in his research, he found that gene which existed. Again, we're talking about early humans who primarily encompass all the genes that would spawn us later. So within these people, they found the genes that was their opposite of this 33% who were themselves dependents, uh, descendants of the tribe of Shabazz. So he isolated the gene that would sever this connection, specifically that it was in the pineal gland that served as a connection. And from this, this is ultimately what humans would call the soul and allowed them to share experiences uh, together. Now the gene that, that Yaku found was ultimately called uh, the SLC 24A5 gene and it was a mutant gene that developed early in humans and Yakub hypothesized that if he could facilitate a human capable of an underground existence having developed a phys physiology suited to draw even vitamin D under sun deficient conditions and that's key being able to develop a, 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 a human that was able to survive under sun deficient conditions because he wanted to develop this, this society in secret. So whereas the tribe of Shabazz needed sunlight to exist, this, this human that he created would not. So he began breeding on the island of Patmos and he, he theorized that it would take approximately 22 generations and 666 years to breed out the dominant genes of their original ancestors. That was the plan and this is what we call eugenics. So after 600 years of this eugenics program, the race that Yaku aspired to bring about, the humans that he aspired to bring about, came into existence and completion. Now Yakub had died at 152 years of age, but his followers were faithful in completing his project. Now the 33% traveled back to Mecca seeking to supplant the native rule and enslave the populace that Yakub had envisioned as his next stage. But again, they were arrested and this time they were exiled once again, but this time they were uh, exiled uh, to the east in a part of Eurasia. And this is where the exiled ones or this 33% would develop their own culture. And as it was their, their nature to dominate, they did so which, with the native population, which is this time was the Australopithecine. And it was in this union that the exiled 33% merged to create a new creature. And this creature was more different from his true ancestors could ever have imagined. So the story of Yakub is ultimately the story of this discontent uh, percentage of populace from the original tribe of Shabazz that he ultimately used the process of of genetic manipulation, um, favoring certain genetics over others, and removing those who do not fit certain genetics from that bloodline. And ultimately, he was able to create what he deemed to be the opposite of mankind, or the opposite of his his homeland, his, his people of Shabazz. The flaw within them was in their reproduction. The flaw in their genetics is that eventually their numbers dwindle from 33 to, 20, to 27 to nine, to three so again this is the mythology of a uh, mythological figure that is called Yakub. Um, we will dig deeper into the story but i hope you had the opportunity to enjoy this thank you again for stopping in at nine world chronicles